topic is parking, and the reason for this meeting is that in the last few weeks we've gotten a lot of calls about parking, and primarily because we had to make some changes here in this parking lot. Uh, this parking lot is a public parking lot owned by the village. And as village staff within this office has increased, we've had a need to provide parking for our employees. We certainly feel as though it's, you know, it's our lot that we need to have parking for our employees. Uh, personally, I come to Village Hall two or three times a day. I was parking on Charlotte Street. I still do sometimes. Uh, I don't mind it, but for me, running in and out is one thing, but for employees that are here, uh, they prefer to have parking nearby, and we thought that they deserve it. So we made some changes here. Um, this is meant to be a forum, so for discussion, open talking. Uh, I, I do want to give a short little introduction first and tell you some of the observations that I've had. I've been dealing with parking here since I started seven years ago. Different elements and aspects of parking have come up through that time. Uh, I think we have some things under control. In the last week and a half since I've been preparing for this meeting, I've been driving around to observe parking, and I can tell you a little bit about what I did uh, last week on a few days to count open parking spaces. Uh, but has prompted me to uh, I identify some recommendations that I would certainly make to the board. I've already talked with the mayor about those, and we can discuss what some of those are. We want to get your feedback where we have problems. And I know we have problems uh, of availability of parking, overnight parking, um, park issues that we have with parking, our people uh, inappropriately parking, and just totally disregarding any of the rules, which puts stress on our parking lots. Um, we have people who use public parking lots as storage for their vehicles. If you're doing that, I'll tell you, we don't have a law against it, we don't have a code against it, but it certainly tips the apple cart. That's the kind of thing that causes problems for us. Our parking lots are meant, not meant for long-term storage. If you have vehicles that you don't use regularly and you want to store them, there are certainly plenty of places <coughs> Uh, for a fee, obviously, but uh, that's what those are intended for. Public parking lots are not intended for long storm vehicle storage. Uh, if you travel away in the winter time, or if in the summer you have a vehicle that you don't use often. So, just a, uh, a quick introduction. Here on the screen are some of the parking lots that we have in the village, and those that are public lots. And the area that I was most interested in watching when I did this little inventory last week of open parking spaces was in and around our business district. And the reason I chose that is because that's where I feel we have the issue. I, I don't think we have a problem with parking, um, you know, in Smoky Hollow, down Smoky Hollow Plaza, down over those areas. We have a problem here in this, in this more congested, more dense, developed area of the four corners and the areas immediately around it, generally about two blocks in either direction of the four corners. In the inventory that I did, I also did uh, count vehicle open parking spaces at the Red Mill Inn and on Marble Street. On Marble Street, we have on-street parking as well as the parking lot at the end. You might ask why. Well, it's not over here at the Four Corners. We do have businesses over there, so I did want to try to see what the situation was there. I'm going to give you some of these numbers that I saw, and you know, you can give me the feedback, and I understand that it is a snapshot, um, but it will tell a story in itself. So of the parking lots that you are probably familiar with is here in Village Hall. Uh, I hope you're familiar with uh, River Street parking lot. We just spent a lot of money on that last year. Uh, it looks nice. It, uh, there's 55 parking spaces. Uh, in my inventory, I said that there's quite a bit, quite a few open. Village Square uh, parking. <coughs> Mercer Park is available for parking. Probably it's not something that you recognize as an open parking lot, and we don't have signage to give you that understanding. But that's one of my thoughts to myself as I went through, and it's something that we want to correct. So that's something that I'll talk to the board about, and we can have a discussion regarding that this evening. Uh, and another area that I looked at for parking is in and around uh, is Elizabeth Street, the first block from Oswego Street down to Virginia. Uh, Oswego Street here, this first block from the Four Corners going north up to Elizabeth Street. West Genesee Street right here, this, this less than a full block, or you might call it a block, from River Street over to the Four Corners. Those are the areas that I inventoried uh, last week. 
And what I tried to do was in trying to get a broad understanding of what the parking issues are. I went on, my intention was to go Monday, Wednesday, Friday at two, I'm sorry, at 10 in the morning and two in the afternoon and just count open parking spaces. And let's see where we have issues. Wednesday was a heavy snow day, so I didn't think it was an appropriate day to try to track something like that, so I looked at Thursday. Now I know that this is the winter months and the demand on our parking is not as great in the winter as it is in the summer. So I understand that it doesn't necessarily represent all of our conditions. And it also doesn't represent stress conditions, meaning when we have an event in the village. Event parking is unique. I don't think that's what we're talking about. But if people have concern over event parking or that they're losing parking during events, we can talk about that today. And I'll give you the floor in just a moment. Let me tell you these numbers here. So last, last week on, on Monday, or let's go through it. Mercer Park parking lot had virtually no cars in it on any of the six occasions I went there to look. Uh, the most it ever had was at one point it had two cars parked in it. Village Hall parking lot, the exact opposite. The available public parking spaces, which there are only a few now, there was only one available on two occasions. The rest of the time, the other four events that I came here and looked at, it was full. So there's, there was no available parking here. And this is during the <coughs> business hours? Yeah, this is, uh, I checked, when I say 10 and 2, I checked somewhere around 10 o'clock. It might have been anywhere from, you know, 9.30 in the morning to about 11. And then 2 o'clock, I think one day I was out there as late as quarter of 3. But roughly the middle of the morning, middle of the afternoon, uh, to check what, these, uh, what the conditions were. River Street parking lot. We've had high demand on River Street parking lot right down one block away from us here uh, in the past. But however, because of change in Dick Long's uh, way in which he manages his office, there's very little stress on that parking lot now. That, that parking lot had an average of 25 cars, uh, parking spaces available at all of the occasions I went over there. Uh, 22, 29, 24, 28, 26, 32. I also know that the beauty salon on River Street is closed on Monday, so the Monday event uh, may have been somewhat biased, but, but even on the other four occasions I was there, there was in excess of 20 parking spaces available. River Street parking lot, again, non-event issues, does not appear to present any problems. Uh, Village Square had in excess of 55 parking spaces on every occasion that I went over there, and as many as 71 on one day. That lot holds 129 uh, cars. There's 129 spaces there. Where uh, that again? Uh, River uh, Village Square. So where, where the fire department used to yeah, be? Yeah, th this one here. Behind okay. Sheehan's, okay. come down the okay. stairs, behind the female yeah. diner. Right. Bank. Bank. Where the yeah. hair salon was down the stairs. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 Um, Marble Street. People may not even be aware that <coughs> on the far end of Marble Street, and again, this awareness is another issue. We need signage to get people in the direction. It is not the most convenient parking for business activity, the end of Marble Street. When it was built, it was built with events in mind. All right, so and, and understanding that, but I just want to let you know, there was never a car in the lot of any of the times that I went down there, which might present the question, why on earth did you ever build a parking lot? But for event activities on um, Paper Mill it's Island, cool. it's ideal parking, and it generally gets <coughs> filled up pretty early. Steve, can you point that out? Yes. Uh, so Marble Street. Street. <laughs> yeah, Marble Street's here on the island. That's perfect. And then so the parking like is where Chef and the Cook is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Jesse, right. Jesse so Cates. Is, down is, Jeff Jesse Cates is on it. Is okay. on Marble Street. Yeah. And the parking lot is at the end of the street. It's further down. And okay. there is on-street parking there as well, and I, I got some measure uh, some inventory of on-street parking as well. So at the end of the parking lot, or I'm sorry, at the end of the street there. Meadow Street parking lot, which I'm sure you don't know about yet, it's not even on the radar, but it is one that we're gonna have. It is pr also primarily an event parking lot. It's over here. It's a large parcel that we acquired from the Canal Corp a few years ago. We turned it into a parking lot. It's not paved, it's a gravel parking lot. Um, again, signage to alert people that it's there. It's, it's not used. But you know what, I didn't expect that it would be. I just went by and checked it when I did this. And it's really intended for future development. As we start to uh, do some different things, 
that parking lot will be more critical. And it is good for event parking, uh, so that you're in close enough that you can walk to the major events. You can walk to Village Square, you can walk to Paper Mill Island, um, and you can walk to a lot of the eateries, restaurants, and taverns in the village from there, but it's not the most convenient for business activity. If you're not familiar with where Meadow Street is, it uh, runs parallel with Route 48. It's behind St. Mary's Church, yeah. is, is where that parking lot's located. Okay, and the Red Mill Inn, park, yeah. uh, the Red Mill Inn <laughs> parking in front of it is, is municipal parking. We have a small sign there. Uh, that's municipal parking. So I did inventory that as well. Very rarely were there cars there. There's 16 spots, and uh, there were times where there was a couple times when all 16 were available. There was never a time when there was any less than 13 uh, available. On on street parking that I looked at was West Genesee Street, Charlotte Street, Marble Street, Elizabeth Street, and Oswego Street. So right around the four corners and Marble Street. No stress on any of those during the day, morning or afternoon. What the concern regarding some of those is uh, uh, students parking there. And because of that reason, some restrictions have been put up. Portions of that are two hour parking. We may consider whether or not that's still necessary because what I found was the students don't appear to be parking on uh, Elizabeth Street on that first block near the business district. Now we have some two hour parking there that does not facilitate people who need to go to an office for the day. Two-hour parking, uh, just, okay, I can't go there at 8 in the morning and leave my car there and come back at 4.15, 4.30 and have left it there all day. I'm in violation of the two-hour parking. The reason why that two-hour parking there, though, is no, Steve, is the business owner requested that yeah. two or three years ago because uh, at the time he had... Uh, uh, a brokerage firm or a financial advisor and will come in so he said students were parking right in front of his business all day so he said if you could do two hours most of my customers I meet with for 45 minutes to an hour and then other customers come in so that was a specific request of, of that business right there. those businesses are now gone we don't want to be setting parking restrictions and parking rules on a business by business basis mm -hmm. we just can't keep up with them but there may be times where it's now time to put a restriction on this portion. Take restrictions off others. Your feedback might help us consider that tonight, and we understand that. Steve, would you consider putting two hour parking on Oswego Street? We could, and sections of it are. There's a, a section as you go up. Um, well, there's no parking as you travel north. Yeah. It's all, it's, all, it's all parking on the west side of the street. Coming south, coming down the hill. Yeah, down. but but isn't some of that two-hour parking? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I see a sign there. Right. Yeah, I'd have to look exactly. Yeah. Our, our, our code guy. guy if there's not, our code guy lives in the middle of the block, and he said nobody ever parks on the street. It's always wide open because they, it's people that want to work in the village don't want to get a ticket. Which don't think we push too hard on the two-hour parking. But it was intended to keep the school kids from taking up all those spots. Because they they would do that, and they have done that in the past. Yeah, so so some, of the some of the signage restrictions. Some of the signage is in direct response to the school and their their availability and how we work student parking with the school is we've got a good relationship. We make them go through the Alive at Twenty Five program, which one of our officers teaches, because we want those kids to really be alive at age twenty five. So we want them to go through the program. But those that don't go through the program. Uh, then they can't park on campus, so then they look for alternative parking. I know some of them park uh, over uh, in, in the Kinney's parking lot, over by the gym. Uh, I've seen them over there, oh, yeah. le leaving a CrossFit place, and then yeah. they'll park their car and, and start walking up Virginia Street uh, to go to school. Yeah. So they will park there as well. And I think what happens right now, Kinney's probably doesn't, doesn't do anything to chase anyone out because they probably don't have stress on their parking lot. But if a couple changes take place in the plaza, such that maybe there's a higher parking demand because maybe an office space goes in and it, I could, it employs a handful of people who know parking, that's when something happens. So someone goes out, they react to the situation that they have in their lot, that pushes a bunch of vehicles somewhere else. Uh, and, and the school vehicles are an issue. Uh, we have restrictions in place specifically for the schools. It's too bad that we need that because they are in some locations not appropriate. 
For instance, we believe North Street, we weren't certain, maybe you know Mike, North Street has restrictions on it. We think that it was because kids were parking there for school, uh -huh. and some of the homeowners oh, yeah. said, yeah. look, my, I, 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 all, all day long I've got a car parked out in front of my house, someone comes to visit, if I'm in the driveway, they don't have a place to park, they got to park a few up, so we put restrictions up. It's unfortunate because, quite honestly, North Street, we have no parking, or just two-hour parking? I believe it's two-hour. Two-hour parking, okay. North Street's a perfect street to park on. It's one of our wider streets. And you've got parking on both sides and provide parking for people, but we put restrictions in uh, because of the school, uh, the, the, the students parking there. Uh, Just so no. you know, I think those, the, both the Oswego Street and the North Street happened back when I was in high school, yeah. 30 so many years ago. So. Oh, so you're the boy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no. So some of them are deep. The, um, on street parking, just so that you have an example, on, on West Genesee Street here, right right in front of uh, right in front of this stretch here, um, there was there was there were people using the the on street parking. Uh, generally, it had cars there when I was uh, counting, but there was always uh, no less than six spots available. Charlotte Street, which is right here. Charlotte Street is not a great parking spot for business activity, but it would be a great spot for employee parking if you need. If you have a small lot and you need to free up some of your lot for your clients and customers, if you were willing to ask your, your employees to park on Charlotte Street, it's not that far from our business district. It's quite close. Charlotte Street was never stressed. It had never less than, than 18 parking spots available on the times I went. Uh, Elizabeth Street, uh, 20, out of 21 parking spaces, there was never less than 14. And Oswego Street right here uh, at the Four Corners in front of Pizza Man, in front of the bank, that was quite heavily used throughout the day, particularly in the afternoon at the 2 o'clock time. There were periods when there was less than 5. There was only 4 parking spaces available. There's about uh, 26 spots total up through there. A couple of things that I observed, and then I'll let you start having the floor, is that signage, as I talked about. The other thing might be striping. Uh, 26 parking spots on Oswego Street is if cars are parked neatly going up there. Mm -hmm. But if park, cars are parked in a manner so that they're spread out, obviously you're not going to get 26 cars all the time. Uh, Dennis Sick, I've spoke to him about parking before, and he's mentioned that often right in front of his building, where I think he can get six or eight vehicles, sometimes he gets half that because of the way cars park. It's not that people are being lazy, it's just that they're not noticing that they maybe didn't pull up, they're not up close enough to the next corner, there's not enough room for another car, but yet they're, they're back into the second space. So striping would help on the street, uh, as well as in some of our parking lots. Our parking lots are, as they age, we lose the striping. Uh, Village Square parking lot now is seven years old, it needs to be restriped. So these are some of the things that we'll look at. Um, signage to where things are. Um, I, I know that we've had issues here and I know we have overnight so feel free. Um, go ahead and let me know what some of your concerns or interests are. Yes. Um, I was telling my secretary about the letter when I got it and when you come in the street entrance her desk is like right there so people stop and talk to her. The person had just moved to Baldwin so and as she's talking to the person the person says how long can I park here? They were parked right in front of the steps, front steps, of on Genesee, library. in front of the library. <laughs> yeah, she's like, you better move it now. I mean, I understand what, there's no parking there, but she said she didn't think there were any signs telling people that. Um, we can look, I believe there are. Yeah, I've because never seen anyone park on yeah. Genesee Street. We never did either yeah. until this woman, and so <laughs> Suzanne directed her, our parking lot. But, oh, new people. Um, I know there are a couple people in this room who would have the same memories as I would as far as the old village. There's pictures of Baldwinsville downtown where there was parking on both sides of the street from the four corners to the bridge, yeah. on going down Genesee Street all the way to the, the intersection. There were cars on both sides of the street, uh, all four directions, cars on both sides. You could park all the way up Genesee Street going up to the funeral home. And I, if, the, if there was a funeral going on, they allowed him to park coming in, into the Four Corners area. So things were different. Mm -hmm. And somebody said, why do we have such an issue now? 
So well, we didn't have Radisson, we didn't have Village We're Green, cars. we We're didn't have them. Seneca Estates or any of all those cars. cars that come through the village that aren't from the village. So we we've, we've multiplied the usage of our streets. Uh, they're just there's just a lot more vehicles coming through. Yeah. And uh, and we've had problems with our lot. Um, one time I had to go to the ambulance corps and ask them to move cars because they were in some sort of training. They're parking our lot on a day when I happened to have two large events where I had a lot of people coming. Um, from the library's perspective, if people park on our lot when we're not open, that's fine by us. We don't care the issues when we're open. And now that that auto parts store is being built, that again brought more to us. And just to forewarn you, probably the end of August, we have a state construction grant in. We have to redo our lot. So probably for two weeks, people won't be able to use our lot at all. So what I'm hoping is the lot that's next to us that belongs to the plaza where they dump their snow, that they will let us use that and we'll set up a temporary, sort of a virtual, a temporary branch where we'll be able to help people who would be difficult to get into the building up the sidewalk. Um, so that will create generally a parking issue during that time at the end of August, early um, September. It probably will, and if you can coordinate with other local businesses in order to provide parking during that stretch, that two week stretch, uh, that would be good. The issues that people have in their private parking lots and unauthorized use of those lots I would encourage you to do one of two things. Maybe with your own signage, provide an opportunity to so people do know when they might use that when they're not using the facility. So if the library uh, you know, is, is perfectly fine with that, you may want to put a sign up. It's to no advantage of you other than to assist people who come to the village during an event. And by events, I generally mean Paper Mill Island, a parade, or something like that. But if, if you say um, uh, uh, lot available to the public on not non-library open hours or something, at least that gives assurance to someone who parks there that they're not in violation. If you've ever parked in the city of Syracuse and gotten towed, you have the tendency to be very cautious about parking anywhere because I've done it. It's expensive. It's extremely timely. I mean, your 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 day is set back hours. Um, when your car is towed, you, you got to go find out where it is for one thing, and they don't release it until you pay for it. And uh, so now, there are people like myself, they may be hesitant to park somewhere, uh, and then during event times, uh, that might be helpful, but that would be at your own uh, preference. Uh, there's very little liability associated with parking, to be honest. I know people have said, I don't like people parking in my lot because of the liability associated with that. And while there is the possibility that someone who parks in your lot and gets hit by another vehicle or falls, that liability exists quite honestly. If you speak with your attorneys about, about that, if you have a concern, I think you'll find it's pretty low. Uh, the occurrences are pretty low and the full liability that <coughs> what, what happens. Why do you think that's Why do you think that is, is low, the liability would be low? Because generally, I think you can make the claim that you didn't, it's not an attractive nuisance, you didn't bring them in, that they, they, they parked there on their own. Uh, now, I suppose if you have issues in your parking lot, they can always uh, approach in that manner. I stepped into a pothole and twisted my ankle and stuff. But generally, it's low. I mean, I don't want to tell you to, to open your lots up because there's no liability. There certainly is. And you do open yourself up to that liability. But if you want to do something to provide parking for other people, you're not you're not at the greatest of risk. There are other things that you do probably on a regular business activities that are of greater risk than that. But certainly, it, uh, don't take my advice. Speak with your attorney. Speak with your insurance carriers before you to do anything regarding opening up your lots to other people. If you so choose, I'm not even suggesting it. I'm just saying if you want to provide your lot to others than for your business in off hours, um, it would be a good thing to do, but uh, do it at, at your own wishes. Yeah, we found that to be true. I mean, we had one where the library had some liability where somebody was walking out of the lot on Elba Lane, 
and there was a small hole in the tarvia and they but we have had as you by many 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 fender benders in the lot and we have never library's never been liable it's always been the drivers anyone else been anyone? Been yes um, my name is wendy vanderwater i have two things i want to sure. say um first i was not aware of all those parking areas. Um, I work at St. Joe's and we have a ton of surface parking lots and we've identified them as lot A, lot B, lot C. If you are going to put signage in those lots, I would suggest you try to brand them as lot A, lot B, or lot Marble Street or just something catchy okay. where people will, where it will like grab onto someone sure, and they'll like know mm -hmm. yeah. where those are. And then if you put it in literature or flyers or the village map you can say here's lot a and here's lot b but i would definitely suggest you try to do some branding with the sure. lots okay like um second you. what i know years ago like when i went to school we were able to park at um word of life how come the high school kids aren't able to park over there we don't know for certain but it was our understanding that they have been able to at various times we suspect because the mayor had a discussion with uh, the pastor recently there was some disrespectful use of the parking lot and that led to some hesitancy for them using their lot uh, so you know it's uh it may be an instance where the few ruined it for the many but it's our understanding that, that they may not be allowing parking there or if they are under some circumstances that don't open up to as many students as they have in the past when they first allowed it you had agreed if you're going to park there to go to a youth group meeting once right. a month right. and they have one every week so you could just pick a week and it went good for a while and then people stopped going and then people started throwing trash in the parking you know coming in the morning after stopping to dunkin donuts and then getting out and throwing your coffee mug and your wrappers on the ground and going across the street to school and they were having somebody spend half a day cleaning the parking lot every day and that's the biggest issue that's the same thing with ours yeah <clears throat> with my lot Every Saturday, Sunday morning, you're picking up stuff yeah. for an hour, and it's yeah. just Beer we have, we have awesome mugs. Yeah. and we have I have signs with all around that parking lot. We have 70 spaces in the back, with no overnight parking, and yet there's four or five cars in a, on a snowy night that are you know we have to plow around them and I'm picking up stuff all morning long. Yeah. So it's not, and there is liability for that too. I mean, we we've had some issues with that, so. You know, I'm kind of looking the other way of, of blocking it off and, and literally on the weekend shutting it down completely. If you need to? Well, we don't need to. It's, yeah, a, it's just a mess. Yeah. Right? I mean, you, know, you guys, I'm sure you deal with it here too. I mean, it's not. It's, 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 it's One thing that we will do at your request, I, I think we collect garbage in the summer at 57 different garbage cans. But if you were to tell me there's a demand for a garbage can at a location near your facility, I will put another one there. We have one right out front. Yeah. They don't it doesn't it. affect. Okay. No, it doesn't change it. I'm trying to figure out what they're there for. It's still going to dump. All they have to do is walk ten feet. That's right. All right. And I put, I put a new guardrail around the building that uh, which I thought would dress them up with a nice wooden guardrail. I didn't think about the flat fat fact that the top of the guardrail is flat as opposed to the rear wall is up and down and everything. Right on top. Yeah, there's a little place for them to sit now. All right. Well, I uh, I don't know what else to do, but if you were to tell me that there's a need for yeah garbage receptacles somewhere that you think we're generating garbage and there's not a, a spot right nearby, let us know. I hate to add another location, to be honest, because it's already heavy on our resources to collect it, but if there's a need for it, we'll do it. Yes? Um, Joanna Paddots, we own the deli. Next door. Somewhere next door. Um, our parking problem is we lost all of our business that night when the angry garlic took off, which we're very happy for them. I mean, it's not, you know, that, but they park in front of our place when they open. So that's our parking issue. The employees park there or the, the business? The, the business the and, and, and yeah. employees. No, I don't think we have. Yeah, we have employees park. Yeah. But they fill our spots and we're in and out. We're just quick, you know, maybe five minutes per person. And people won't go to a public parking lot yeah. to come in the deli to get a sandwich. But, but you know so why? we started, we stopped, clo we closed. Yeah, that's too bad. And it is not, you know, we have to close at three because we literally get no business um, from four o'clock huh. on. Yeah. None. It, um, here's, here's the take. Generally, people want to park very close to a place 
the distance that people are willing to travel from a parking space to the place of their business is related to the time they spend in that business. So for instance, if you're running into the bank doing quick business and leaving, you don't want to be in the bank for three minutes and have to travel to and from the bank seven minutes. So you don't want to have to park at Mercer Park to walk up to the bank. You want to be able to park in front, go in, and you want the parking time or the travel time from your parking space to be, to be close to your transaction time. Unfortunately for your situation, a restaurant, generally people are going in and they're going to spend in excess of an hour there. In a deli, they're going to spend in excess of 15 minutes there. It would be nice if the parking was directly adjacent to your facility. I don't know how to handle that because right. the, um, it does, does present an issue, but I will say something that, I, that, that I've said before is not that well received by many. And uh, if you have employees for your businesses, and your employees are taking up the very best parking spaces adjacent to your place of business, I'm sorry, but I, there's not much I can do for you. I'm doing our very best. There should be, if you are asking your, your employees, or if, you're, if the parking available to you is public parking, I would suggest that you try to leave that parking open for your clientele and ask your employees to park at a location that may not be as convenient but yet frees up those spaces for your employees. Because all too often, we've had people mention to us that there's inadequate parking, and I'm going, there's, there's parking around this facility. I see, but we want the spots right here. And I, and I say, I can understand that. You want these spots, and they're full right now. And I don't know whose you know, cars are in these spots. And they go, well, well my car is that one, and my employees is that one. And I'm saying, well, this is, this is bad management practice. You, you have seven spaces directly in front of your property and you're taking up five of them with your employees. I'm not going to tell you how to dictate you know, what you tell your employees, but if you want to free up some spaces, granted anyone can jump in those spaces, but if your employees are going to jump into them first thing in the morning, the one thing that you can be sure of is they're not going to be available from 8 a.m. to 4 that entire time. So, yes? Can that be the devil's advocate? Certainly, yes. All your spots right back here are marked for village employees. It's, it, but it's our parking lot. It's the it, village's this, parking lot. Yes, it is. That's that right. Is and, by I mean, I won't, I won't disagree with you that it sounds as if we're being uh, yeah, somewhat... I think that's a genesis of part of this issue, is the back lot here being totally taken over when you can't park. This and is the city the, center here. This is the village center where all the business is. You're telling all our customers, employees, yeah. Go off and park over here, yeah. whereas this I lot control is controlled yeah. by the village. And the interesting the thing employees. there, Steve, is, is when your lot is filled, I get them. So now, you know, I run a couple of shifts. My, we went from six employees to 50 employees, mm -hmm. but we need every single spot we can. And a lot of the village businesses, or the business that goes on here, whether it be a court night or voting, or where there's a lot of people coming out. My partner, let's get full. Yeah. Get full well, of, of certainly, we've on. done everything to discourage any village employees from parking in anyone else's lot by providing on-site parking at this place of their place of employment. So here, but that's contradictory to what you were just saying. Right. About yeah, one. yeah, but it's uh, I'm going to take that was in the yeah. end. To, to Steve's point, the village owns this lot. Yeah. So our patrol cars. I just heard somebody say patrol cars. Oh, I our patrol that. cars have to be here That's because right. this is where our officers leave from. Uh, this is the uh, this is the place where we go and to and from work. This our patrol cars have to be here. Our officers have to be able to park here. So well, and, I don't think I disagree with that, Mike. And, and, and we we Mike. put our we, and the other issue is our employees. To, to Steve's point from earlier, the village employees. You know, we've got more school resource officers, so as I start to look at our staff during the daytime of a couple clerical people, a couple school resource officers, a couple administrative people, now just from our police side of the house, we start to fill up lots. There's times where we don't have any spots available, let alone if the mayor has a meeting with three or four people or the judge has a hearing right. and we bring in some people and there's literally no place to park. That's where I we get have them. to have 
and yeah, and that's where people would use you a lot in the right. past. And now there's no spots in your lot because the number of your employees up there. Mm -hmm. So sounds that's like why you've kind of kept that close. Sounds like you're out growing the location. Well, we might be, or, or anyone else. I just mentioned Justin. Why does the population relocate? That's a thought for sure. You know, I, 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 I guess I would ask. Really, there's not a better location though than in the center of the village, right? Or your village office. In addition to that, by the way, while we do maintain our parking for our clients in a sense because we have people come pay water bills they're the three best spots in our lot we did not reserve the best spots in our lot for our employees so that they can easily walk from a parking spot to the door the best spots in our lot are reserved for the people who come here to pay bills and we do that for a couple reasons one for courtesy to our customers but also the vast majority a large portion of the people who come to pay their bills in person are elderly mm -hmm. and we understand that and we've always made a point of making sure that those spots right here at the corner are open that's that's my problem too i have many elderly customers and we have the back parking lot that we try to reserve a few open for and right on the street and the street gets filled up and that gets filled up. i've seen just this past week a person circle around my lot and i had to go park somewhere else and Poor guy. I don't know where he wound up. Park. Yeah. I. It's it's it's. This is why we're here. I believe. Yeah. Just to try to find a safe. Well, I'm not trying to throw errors. Yes. Yeah. But the unfortunate part is this lot is a log jam. Meanwhile, there's 350 this spots available the in the village. Is. This is where the business is. This yeah. is where the action. This is a great area. This is a great village. But you know, to go to work in the morning. Now I'm fortunate. I I go up the highway garage. I literally park 15 steps from my door. It's, highway garage it's, it's huge i got a lot of parking here but in the past i i parked i worked for firms that were i right. i walked you know 15 minutes Steve, parking in the vicinity of this space is much of it is within a two-minute walk yes it does. uh i want to pose a question to mike like what i i don't understand why the police department doesn't pick up their cars at the highway department garage and then leave their personal cars there where they would be behind the fence more safe undercover so they don't have to brush them off and then I mean there's no point in having a car here if you don't have a police officer to drive it and then you got the police officer's car here so I would free up 10 12 spots of the how many cruisers you have uh five or six then six or six, six okay yeah. well there's no place to park them undercover up in the highway garage well uh, so okay there's no place to do that it and would then seem to me that okay. what we do is our officers report here because this is where the locker room is okay. this is where they get dressed so we have some contractual responsibilities that our officers have to be here at a certain time or be ready to go at the hour that they're appointed to, to, to go. So if the officer is supposed to work at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, they have to go up to the locker room and they have to be down in our spot room ready to go at 3 o'clock per, per contract with the, with the village. So, so there's not a locker room up at that highway department garage? No. But we have a, uh, we have a break room for our employees. Um, I mean, it would be worth the investment if they would, if they would free up a bunch of parking spots. Plus, I think it would be. Yeah. Well, no, the, I, the other issue, Dennis, is that so if, if you're coming on at three o'clock, what we require our seven to three officer to do is if it's you know January, February, is to go out there, start your car, brush your car off, so that way when three o'clock hits, if a call comes out, you're not spending ten minutes brushing off and de-icing your car. So that way that car is ready to go. Oh, yeah. We can't do that if our cars are up there and uh, Steve's driving vehicle 301 and you're driving vehicle 303. Our police department, our headquarters is here. Our exchange of information occurs here. Our officers meet the squad room. We require that there be an actual conversation amongst our officers to say, hey, this is what, I, this is what went on today. This one on, went on the, the midnight shift. Be on the lookout for this. Um, it's not a long period, but it's you know roll call in essence of a of a small agency. Um, years ago, uh, Mayor Saracini asked us to do that for a period of time, and it really uh, disrupted our operations uh, to a great extent. And uh, um, I, I had conversations with with uh, the mayor at the time, and then Mayor Clark, and we, and we moved our cars back here for that very reason because uh, this is where. Uh, we need our officers to come to exchange information and for the operation of the organization um, to show patrol cars and officers back and forth. Um, we, we would then have officers that really weren't starting their shift until you know being available for calls 
10, 15 minutes after the hour. And that might not seem like much until it's your home or something that you're waiting an extra 15, 20 minutes for an officer to show up. Our response time is, is uh, four minutes or less from the point in time somebody picks up the phone to the point in time somebody shows up at your house uh, for a call. And if it's even, it's even less than that, an emergency call. That would impact our, our response time. So do they get dressed on your time or their time? Their time. Their time. Their time. So they have to be in our squad room, which is downstairs on our first floor, ready to go at the hour. So okay. that they pick their car up at three two thirty and got here and got ready and ready to go three. They got their car. The car is already brushed up. We'd have to pay them. A, we'd have to pay them a half an hour of overtime every day. Right? Yeah. Like I said, you don't pay them till they till they're dressed. Yeah, but if we're requiring them to get their car and come here with the patrol car. You don't think they would prefer to pick up their car and put their personal car under a punch protection? There is they, would put, they would put in for half an hour of overtime every single day, yeah. per office. Yeah. Count on it. Oh, yeah. Guaranteed. <laughs> I would. There, there's I absolutely would. no doubt about that. I would that expect fact. it, too. Yeah, yeah it's, they have a union contract. That's as far as chasing a handful of spots in the parking lot, I haven't uh, talked about it with Dick yet, but I've looked. I, so I do this, this inventory, and it's easy. I recognize right away. The issue is this parking lot. Mm -hmm. This parking lot's the issue. Uh, nobody has mentioned overnight parking, but I think this parking lot, also related to overnight parking, is an issue. Um, it, it, there may not be enough, it may not be in the right locations, and it may not be in a manner that allows us to clear it properly after a snow event. Uh, but I think I can pick up a few parking spots in this lot. And it's one of the things that I'm going to look at. Now, it's going to require some cooperation from those who use this lot. For instance, I think I, if we want it to be really tight, I could put three spots right here at the entrance. That's going to narrow the entrance. Now, I think there's adequate room for two lanes and in and out. However, it's going to be narrower than it is. And I will tell you right now that there are people who drive through this lot in a manner that will not make that as easy or as safe as it is today with it being wired. But if we need some space, there's a, there's a few spots. And maybe we can do something else with the lot, too. If we were to get with the bank and get a, a true easement through your lot, I could make this one way. I could go to diagonal parking, and I may be able to pick up a couple spots there. Any spots we can pick up would be public space, because we have the number of spaces that we have right now. I don't anticipate employment in the Village Hall increasing. I mean, we're going to pick up one officer. Yeah, and uh, one person at the desk, right? Because potentially. Right. So we may be adding two, but I think we've already accounted for spaces for them. Mm -hmm. So we have adequate spaces. The, the Right now with, I think there's only five, well, there's nine across the front and four public spots. There's only 13 public spots in this lot right now. Anything that I could add, we would make public space because we have adequate for the employees we have here. And to be truthful, when we do have a meeting, we don't have adequate space. Uh, I've had people come here and tell me, I'm parked in your 20 minute spot out there, can I stay there? And our answer is no. Uh, let's go find us a place for you to park. Here. Yeah, yeah. Is, that's, where, that's where I get And we have a late shift of, of people coming in from 311 at our call center. And they, our employees can't find a place to park because of that. On those, on those days that there are something going on. Yeah, maybe courts do it because I, I'm it's, not told it's, it's anyone to it's, ever park there. It's court I mean, and voting. That's the yeah, only two things. I've made it very clear that um, on the few occasions I've had people come here for a meeting, I said, this is your parking location. And if they tell me that I'm, they're parked illegally or I'm parked up against the building or something, we've made arrangements to get them parked for our meeting. But that's only happened on one occasion. But I, but I think um, people have parked in the 20 minute without telling me for a meeting because I see them, they leave, and then they go in and they get in that spot. We don't want them in that spot. That's th those three spots that we have, the handicap and the two marked for short term, they are really intended for people coming in to pay bills. People who come to pay bills here love to pay their bill. A lot of them are elderly citizens, and they love the opportunity to come in, be greeted by our clerks. They say hello. They often know each other by name. It's a nice experience for them. If there's no parking, it, it detracts from that experience. So we're trying to make sure that we provide that opportunity for people, um, and we try to keep those spots on. Yes? What about um, diagonal parking on Genesee? Is it ever been or it was years ago I don't know though when 
like when you're talking about when there's parking all the way up through there, I'm going to guess that there weren't, there was not a turn, center turning lane back then years ago. And uh, probably with the layout of, of, our, of our lanes right now, Diagonal parking would be difficult. I think we're going to have to stay with parallel parking. Because then we'd have vehicles backing, backing out, out. Yeah. No, into, yeah. into traffic there, which as you come eastbound, oh, it already kind of splits there into two lanes for some people going straight on East Jenny and some people turn right on 48. So that would just be very problematic there. Yeah. And, and DOT would control that parking yeah. anyway. Yeah. And I can't see where they would want people backing out there just due to the potential number of accidents. They're, they're not going to give up a lane. It's, that is West Genesee Street and Syracuse Street, Oswego Street, and actually Salina Street as well. Those are state roads. They're controlled by the state. We certainly have the opportunity to discuss parking with them, but changing any lanes, eliminating the turning lane or anything like that is probably to be out of the question. Uh, they just, struggle with it. Just one other question. Yeah. Can I ask you where your lot is? Oh, I'm sorry. Right, right here, right, right behind the village hall here, 45 Oswego Street. Oh, okay. The no, old Andrews Furniture Building, the yeah. tall red brick building, the buildings on either side. Okay. One of the problems that we've had, we have a handicap spot out here, and we have people who work in the village who have handicap stickers who park there and park all day at a handicap place 20 feet from our door. Sure. Yeah. You know, you, you kind of wonder what they're thinking. Well, and we have since labeled it 20 minute handicap 20 minutes. Steve. Yes. Just going back to Joanne's issue, is there any way you could do like just a couple of 15 minute parking like sections right in front of the deli? You know, just change the signs uh, there. I don't do I, that. I'm here to listen. If if you think you know, if, if you think short term parking yeah. in front of your place of business is something that you would like, we can consider it. Now we're gonna look at it not specifically for your business, for overall business district, how does it work? But if it does work we certainly support that. Now, here's the issue with parking restrictions. Our police department is not staffed in a manner to really go out. We don't have a meter made. We don't have the opportunity. But I will tell you that at the request of the, the studio, the um, salon on River Street, they asked for some two-hour parking. And we explained to them, we can give you some two-hour parking, but we have no means of enforcing it. It has been self-enforced very well. It's been in for I think, two and a half, maybe three years, and quite honestly, it's the space that is generally open. People are respecting that two-hour sign, even though, I don't think, have you ever issued a ticket? I don't recall, and, yeah. and to Steve's point, it's not something we go out every day and say, let's, let's go enforce parking. Um, I remember when I was a young officer, we had a, a parking enforcement officer working for the village, and she was the most despised person in the world. <laughs> I felt so bad for this poor girl, um, because all she did was write parking tickets every day. Back in the days of mirrors. Uh, I, I wrote somebody a, a, a ticket that was at St. Mary's one time, and come in and tell me I wasn't a good Catholic. So, <laughs> that's a true story. And, and so, people get upset with the parking, and, and I understand that, but if, if someone calls up and says, hey, there's a car parking in the two-hour spot, for the last three days, every day, and this is the, the, the plate number, well, we're going to run the plate number, we're going to go over there, we're going to put a warning ticket on it, we're going to try and track down the owner and say, we got to sign out here. and like deter some yeah. people from parking. Yeah, yeah. so, so if, 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 if you spot. notice where you're in a two-hour spot, it's by your business, and people aren't really abiding by that, well then, just call us and let us know and say, this car is there on a regular basis, here's the plate number, um, and we'll take care of that. Well, when we'll I, talk to the person and we'll enforce that if we need to. And the last time this happened, which was a few years ago, and, and, and Mayor Clark was the mayor, um, and we did a, we did our, I, I did the survey at the time then. What we found is the, the majority of the people that were having the impact, um, they were the, actually the, the, the business owners that were parking there on the street. Yeah. And they would go out and then they would move their car 20 feet forward and they would drive along the block and come back. And they were trying to play the games. We said, "Look, I wrote a letter and said you kind of got to help everybody out here." To the mayor's point, don't take the spot right in front of your business. You know, try and try and open things up. And then we, you know, that letter seemed to be successful. Um, but if if there's a, it is an issue, you let us know, and, and we've got officers that will take care of that. Is going out and enforcing parking a, a priority that I've set for our officers? Quite frankly, no. Um, but it's something that we'll certainly address on an as-needed basis if people say this is a particular issue with a particular car or two. 
Well, a lot of them come in, a lot, and I'm saying most, and they'll go, I'm in the no parking police spot, and I'm like, that's okay, we'll just hurry, and then they go out, so they respect that spot, right, right, and I let right. them park there, and I tell them, just do it, yeah, <laughs> but because we're in and out, I mean, yeah. we're that quick, mm -hmm. but so they do respect that park right well, here, that's it. Police. <laughs> yeah. If you're having a problem, Joanne, with somebody along that stretch is not abiding by that two hour yeah. on a regular basis, just let us know. God it knows is hard though, with the nail shop, oh, um, they man. all park, the, and you're in there two hours getting your nails done. Right. So it's really, so, it's it's yeah. all right. the, it's everything. But, but you know, the, we, we're here to listen and yeah. maybe we can consider two spots in the vicinity of your business because you're a quick business, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, 15 or 20 minutes. Yeah. Right. It, and, and we'll honestly, see if that's there are times, because I own the candy shop, so there are times that people, like if they're picking up favors that they've ordered for me, that's an in and out thing yeah. too. So mm -hmm. it's not, if you can't do it just for one business, right. there's a second one. Yeah, that and that's, what, that's <laughs> really what we want. You know, we want to hesitate from yeah. you know, our spot zoning in a sense, our spot right. parking, mm -hmm. because business has changed and we can't change the parking layout as frequently as, as maybe there's right. a turnover for businesses but if there is if you're saying that in this area there's enough businesses to warrant short-term parking well we can, even we like for that for the right. you know, for yeah. coffee shops yeah. I mean, yeah. people that run and just Steve, I'm just yeah. thinking that to to not make it any any harder on the people that are going to Angry Garlic or Pizza Man, you could probably even limit the 30 minute, maybe just till like 7 p.m. or yeah. something. Right. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Yeah. people yeah. dining yeah. later yeah. and go yeah. and park there we, we for them two hours. We can cut it right. off at a certain time period yeah. on the signage. Yeah. Exactly. And that make it, because that's really not something we are going to enforce right. at 10 o'clock at night. Right. 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 Because that's just bad. Right. You right. know, once we get past that yeah. five, six o'clock time period, yeah. So I, I've got some apartments. I got 41 Oswego Street. I've yeah. got apartments and businesses. <clears throat> if we could accommodate uh, parking on the street overnight after a certain hour, that would really help me out and get some cars out of the lot. See, the overnight parking though becomes a real issue, especially in the winter time for snow removal yeah. for yeah. for on for on street parking. That's just yeah. that that's just really it becomes a public safety issue because if these guys can't get those cars. Um, right. Can't get those streets plowed over to the sidewalks and, and, and through the curbing. Then what we end up with is in the morning, um, we've got areas that aren't plowed. We've got people that are coming out and that are trying to get their cars unstuck. So we've got people out in traffic either trying to shovel or get those cars out of there. And then we got cars coming down the hill, often in snowy conditions, as I'm thinking Route 48. Um, and on our more narrow streets in the village, um, if we've got a car on either side, to get an ambulance or a fire truck through there becomes very problematic for you us. Could you do odd even parking on oh, those God. streets? You could. The problem that we have is that, again, our resources are such that if we have a snow event and we plow and we uh, leave an area where there's no parking, if we're not in for plowing the next night, it doesn't right. matter that it's free. We generally don't Go back. deploy people. To just go in and clear those spots. Now we could, and if the demand is great enough, we could start doing that. Right. We have not traditionally done that, and what it leaves is large areas right. unclear for an extended period of time. This year we've been fortunate. This 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 snow thaw snow thaw event. But you know, think back just a couple of years. I mean, in the seven years I've been here, this is the only year we've not had to go in and move snow. And we're moving snow to accommodate visibility and access to space. We, we would plow to where all of our parking lots, and I'm sure many of yours, have lost numerous spaces because there's a pile of snow there. So, so we have those issues. Um, overnight parking is a problem uh, for us. Um, and I'm, I, nobody has brought it up, but I know that Well, it's, I'm bringing it up yeah, now. I know there's some, some spots like the 20 minute. I mean, if those would be available for overnight. If we have some along the, the upper, the, the northern portion of the, of the parking lot. No, I think here, right? We're, we're, we made all of this available for overnight parking. For overnight now? Okay. Right. So, yeah, and we've jumped around a little bit. But now, what I call the west side here, that's all available for overnight parking. The problem with that overnight parking is it doubles as village parking. So in a, in one of your tenants who might park there is being asked, park your car there overnight, but it's got to be moved by 8 in the morning. Now that might not work for someone who works 
an odd shift um, or has a maybe a student and they can't university. park there yeah, yeah it makes it tough so now their overnight parking is a place that they have to get up at eight in the morning and move well it might be not be convenient if their work shift ended at three in the morning I, I don't know whose does but you, you don't know so there may be some difficulty that's and, even at three and, and you know we're trying to work some of this out and we will I understand River Street parking lot needs some more overnight parking as well and we have an issue over there because of the way we clear snow and where we dump it. Um, the ideal spots for overnight parking are right in the lane where we want to push and dump snow. So we isolate that to provide that opportunity. If we don't do that, we're piling snow in the parking lot, losing parking spaces. But you also have so. people that are parking there for long periods of time. They are. And, uh, yeah. Which is nothing, nothing is being done about that. There's nothing we can do. There's no, well, there's no there code or law against it. Yeah, so, we have to upgrade our code. And, 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 you, and you know what they say about laws that are made for specific situations? They're bad. <clears throat> bad. What would be good is if the people would just abide by the element of what is proper. The, the parking lot is very clear. We've talked to all those people. I'm no, talking about one tenant way. should this not be is, allowed to occupy yes, three parking that's spots. That's right. And then overnight one, parking. And that's what happens. Right now, we do have a situation. One tenant occupies multiple spaces, and the vehicles don't move. Which and you, you can't, can't shame them. You can't. I mean, I've <laughs> said to them, do you realize what you're doing? The hardship that you're causing other people. And the answer is, yeah, well, you know, it's. Uh, it, it, the concern is not with them. And we've tried to raise the concern. And we can write code that would would specifically address those situations. You've got to be careful when you do that. You've got to recognize that you may be writing laws and codes that create a hardship on good citizens. So we've got to be very cautious when you start writing code and law that is specific to a particular situation and we've talked about it we're, we're gonna because we're fed up with it as well it's it's uh, uh it's been a thorn in our side i mean so when i was trying one to one person can't be held accountable well, well one, mean, of, one of our possibilities is if we have overnight parking and we make it odd even yeah. so if you have a long line like along the fence where the power company uh -huh. is there so if we take the left half and say on odd numbers you park there and then an even so they have to move their car for the next night yeah. Well, now if you're going to be in the spot you're not supposed to, we can tow you away. So we may have to get back to that. Then you can't live elsewhere and put a couple of your cars in our municipal lot. And even when we're trying to strike the lot, Steve calls the guy up and gives him a raft of, you know. Yeah, he he, if he's not living there, he then should be right. there. So, so that's, that's where we're trying to address this issue he lives in and, and, and determine whether we need to do it legislatively <coughs> or can we do it creatively in some other fashion, like an not even or, but it's the, that still doesn't help us in April, May, June, July, September, October when it's not snowing and we've got a car sitting there, or two yeah. cars sitting there Take for an extended out. period of time. But at least it, it makes somebody's life a little bit more difficult, at least in our real crime, uh, crisis issues, which is where the snow hits and then we lose those spots because of the snow, because of where we live. It now creates so much more of a problem. Uh, this lot here years ago used to be odd even as well along that west side. So. There's, in, in, in for the same reason that Steve mentioned, so if one night it snows bad, they can get it cleared out, and then maybe the next day or so or two, they can get the other side cleared out so it's available for parking, because otherwise, if the snow's there and then it freezes, you can't even get a car in here sometimes. And, and to your issue there, I, I really don't want people who are coming here to Village Hall to go parking in your parking lot. That's not appropriate. People should be parking in their authorized mm -hmm. spaces. I, I, I will add a sign here designating Charlotte Street and um, River Street parking lot is the overflow for this lot. So on court night, they at least they don't have the excuse, well, I didn't know where to park. Um, not that that's that great an excuse. I parked illegally because I didn't know where to park. Well, uh, like I said, I'll tell you what, you can tell that to the guy who towed your car in Syracuse. And he'll say, yeah, it's still 145 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but if we, have, if we have some signage up that indicates that there are other places to park that are available for your business here in Village Hall, they certainly would have no excuse, no reason, and no excuse to be parking in your parking lot. And, and I don't want them going up there. When they come here for court and they find this lot full, 
To accommodate court, we do close the office here at quarter of four. Court is starts at four. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so the court lock or the court attendees are starting to come in, and we do close, and our clerk and such go home at quarter of in an attempt to start to open up some spaces. But you don't have the opportunity to close early, right? So I mean, your people are still here. Yeah. So, <laughs> we don't want the police closing <laughs> early. <laughs> 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 Going home early. So the dispatchers and other people have yet to leave at four o'clock. Court people are showing up. The lot's full, and yes, I'm, I'm certain that they are doing just what you're saying. That the next closest spot is where they're going. But we'll give them uh, some direction with signage, and it'll be up to them to do that. But don't you say little thing? Yeah. Too. Um, just was looking at you know just direction and giving customers you know. No, having them know where to park. I would say that it should say public parking instead of municipal because I think that people don't really know that that's what that means. That's fine. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's a good point. It is true. a little thing, but I mean, I have a bachelor's degree and I look at municipal and I go, is that what you think of parking? <laughs> <laughs> Google it. It sounds like a great Right? You know, and I'm like, well, I think so, but no. And then that goes but to, seriously. yeah, I think some of the waypointing, we could probably do a better job of directing people where there actually is yeah. parking. And there's yeah. only just, I mean, I was looking as I was going through town today to see where there were signs. And granted, I just came down um, for 31, but there's just, you know, just the one sign right there. Yeah. And I noticed that it's a municipal parking, yeah. and I know that people don't know that that's okay. Yeah. It doesn't stand cool. out. I, I, I bought those signs a couple years ago. They're over at the Red Mill Inn. When you're driving by in your car, that sign looks about this big. Mm -hmm. okay. It's not what yeah. we need. We need signs. That are very, like you said, they, they have to be either a large P with the arrow, that's right. generally accepted mm -hmm. as public parking. Right, that's um, why I got the big candy shop sign yeah. because <laughs> people didn't know that my lollipop was a candy. <laughs> Is there some place that we can point to that has the public parking map? Our, our website has it. Has that that map is on our website. Oh, that's cool. Uh, and I think in two forms. I'm not sure, but. That is on the village website. Um, okay. As I look at, you know, we've got that uh, the village square where the photo park was and a couple people said, well, where is that? I think, and there's 150-something spots in there, Steve. Yeah. You know, that's a lot of spots. So if we can and it's somehow not that get bad waypoint people to the there, yeah. that, that's, a, that's a good place for parking because it's still pretty centrally located. Um, along some of those businesses along 48 and and Genesee Street, East Genesee Street there. So that is close and then the walkway underneath and I know there's different comments at different points in time about that walkway underneath the There's some sign at the corner the the too to direct, like if people need to get back there from there, unless if they're not coming down, you know, 48 from that direction, they're mm -hmm. not going to even know that that's available yeah. if they're not familiar right. with Right, same with the River Street lot. Right. A lot of people don't even know if you're not from Balls or you're not sure where you are. Right. People don't even know that lot right. is there, right. but it's really just tucked behind the buildings there, uh, the lawn place and and, uh, and some of the buildings along in there. Mm -hmm. Now, Robin, you and I had talked mm -hmm. about this. It's not really an issue of not enough parking. It's just where some Perception. of it is. It's a perception yeah. issue. I, I can remember uh, a certain fellow that owned a Cajun restaurant over by the bridge mm -hmm. who complained when we had a farmer's market and an auto show because it took up all his parking. He doesn't own any parking. It's a public right. parking spot. Right. And I said to him, did you look over in the cottage parking lot? He said, I'm not having my customers walk from that parking lot over. I said, there's spots in that lot that are closer right. than if you park in the, the right. square. And he said, well, but I'm not having my employees walk over there at night, the women and stuff. I said, so you walk across the street with them. I mean, I, I was out one night, it was a Friday night, um, there was a concert going on. So that square lot was packed. 45 spots open in the cottage parking lot, and he was claiming there was no place for his people to park. I said, put it on your website, there's parking directly across the street mm -hmm. in, a, in a village lot. Well, no, that was too complicated, we can't do that. So, I mean, in some cases, there's legitimate issues, and in some cases, it's just people Perception. don't want to take one more step. Yeah, and they they're walking farther to get into Wegmans than they are to you know right. get into any. But I, you know, I'm thinking about it as I go to other places, 
you go to Lake Plas or you go to Skinny Atlas. Right. There's some good signage. People know you find where to park and, and, you, and you know where to park. I think we can probably accommodate that and then hopefully through muscle memory, so to speak, with you know, you, you kind of train people, all right, these are some parking spots that are available for folks to go to. I, I can have a candy scavenger hunt throughout the parking lot. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty educated. That'll work. That'll work. <laughs> One of the things that, to get slightly <coughs> off, but not too far off, the issue that the mayor and I have talked about is that while you might not understand the, uh, the concept of pedestrian traffic and how it relates to some of your businesses, not all of yours, obviously if you don't have walk-in business, but a candy store certainly is. If we had centralized parking like Skinny Atlas does and you had to walk to all of your locations, you are now walking past our boutique retail facilities and that's what attracts people into those. Right now, we have, we struggle keeping some of our businesses in place because it, I don't know that this exact thing happens, but I've talked to people who do this. They will go to the bank and park in front of the bank. And then they will drive to Dollar General and go in there. And then they will drive from there to the barber shop to get their hair cut. They didn't walk past a single business. They were Their objective was to park in front of each business. Now well, I know we have that, too much parking. That, that's a societal <laughs> thing. That, that's right. That, that really. And what it results in is none of our boutique retails that we've had, some have come and gone, and we still have a few, but there's no pedestrian traffic walking past those, and therefore someone can lure them in. Uh, to be honest, if you had a centralized parking, people used it and had to walk to locations, it might provide the opportunity for some other retail here in the village, which is one of the things that we're, we would love to see. We, we try to make efforts to uh, encourage it. I know people say, well, what do you do for businesses? We don't do a whole lot. We're not an economic development arm of anything. But we certainly do think about your businesses and think about future possible businesses and how they might thrive in the village or at least you know, be able to be sustainable. And truthfully, the fact that everyone drives from location to location is part of the problem why our small businesses struggle. There must be a positive incentive we can use to have people park in a more available spot. So, as an example, um, I'm glad no one's talking about charging for parking. No. I don't no like that. that. That's a, everyone hates to pay for parking. Yeah. How about if we pay people a dollar <laughs> to park in the empty lot? So the young kids are going to go there. People are just trying to save a buck, and maybe the Chamber of Commerce or something like that, or or well, how much is that? A couple thousand dollars a year to start moving. People are willing to walk a little bit more if they're going to make a buck or two. I don't know what. Or that is. Well, sometimes it's a positive, a positive incentive. Some kind of positive, yeah, some kind of positive incentive to park somewhere else. And they park they, for an hour, they go around the block and park again. <laughs> 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 But the idea is to give them a good solution. I but this app should say you can only do it once a day or something. I mean, come on. It well, shouldn't should be that hard. And the, the, the alternative to that is I think what other places have done is they haven't created the incentive to park in centralized parking. What they've done is they've eliminated all of their peripheral parking right. and provided only centralized parking. And you have skinny parking, parking in Skinny Atlas. Yeah. Skinny Atlas yeah. has yeah. On, yeah. on street parking, but in very limited areas. They have by design, moved all their parking to a central location. Now, it turns out, it is metered. And as it turns out, they have the ideal setup yeah, for it. It really is perfect. And uh, But that centralized parking forces you to walk past numerous locations to get to your destination. And there is an opportunity that you drop a dime in some of those locations as you walk by. As you drive by, there's no possibility. Then you're not going to lure anyone in as they drive by. But as you're walking, you can. So I'm not saying that's the concept we're trying to go to, but it certainly wouldn't hurt if we had that element in the village. <clears throat> Meaning, if Village Square parking lot was a more utilized facility, it's, it's got plenty of vacancy in it on typical days, and then people did walk to their destination, uh, it could help out provide opportunity for other businesses. Um, we're a long ways from that, but uh, we are not talking about, it's never been mentioned since I've been here, paying for any parking. 
uh, we've never talked about meters. Uh, and a few times someone has said, well, what about meters? Everyone has said, no, we don't. We got rid of them a long time ago. We have no interest in that. That discourages people to come in, particularly your short-term customer. We have a lot of short-term customers. We have the bank, we have the deli, we have other locations like that that people run in. They don't want to stop and have to feed a meter. So we're not talking about that. Um, but we are open to you know, any of your suggestions. We've got a bunch of things today that I think are good. Um, unless I'm reading you wrong, and tell me so. I think the critical place is right out here. We need to look at this lot. We need to look and see what we can do to this lot to provide additional public parking. I can't guarantee anything. Our, our demand has grown here. Um, it's, it's our demand for parking has grown here because of increased employment within this building. Uh, we'll look and see what we can do. Yes? Um, why can't you have your non-essential employees park in other departments? Right. Here in the village? It, that would be up to the mayor to ask that question of his employees. Well, um, pay them a dollar a day to do it. <laughs> well, seriously, some kind of positive yeah, incentive. Recognize that. I don't want to be... You the I don't want to be <laughs> too old, but this is... This is our driveway that when they didn't need it all, it was available to the public. Our driveway now, we, we got more kids, and my driveway is full, and we're not letting the neighbors park in our driveway. That's really what has happened. This is the village's lot. This was always intended to be a village lot. Now, has it been made available to other businesses? Yes. Now, do we have a policy in planning board review that if you are within 500 feet of a public lot, you do not have to provide parking for your new facility? We do. To be honest, we may have to start thinking about that. Yeah. For new businesses that say, I want to be in the village, I want to be in the village center, and I am on a, a postage stamp, I have no available parking within my business, our policy of no parking, no parking required for your facility if you're within 500 feet of public, we may have to evaluate because we may have sold that parking spot multiple times to multiple businesses. And, and it just doesn't work to do that. And this lot has morphed over the years. I remember when I first started working here, which was 32 and a half years ago, that west side of the wall that's west side of the lot that's now marked for village employees, it was marked for village employees then. And then over years, things change and those signs come down and then other signs go up and signs come down and signs go up. And these are uh, cyclical issues as, as time go on. But, but I remember coming to work here and uh, coming for an interview and trying to pull into a parking spot and saying, oh, I can't park there. i got to find somewhere else to park because it said village employees and I was just coming for an employment interview. But so, it's on the map as a municipal, isn't it? It is. It is and, and it's... We have, we have 14 spots. There, there's so some municipal and, spot. And, and then certainly after spots. 4 o'clock, it's, it's wide open. So that's why I'm from it. Sir, you had your hand up in the corner. So. Yes. yes. My, my wife owns Woods Bridal on the corner of the bridal shop. Mm -hmm. and the, most of her customers come from out of town. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, she does get some prom people from local, but most of them, they first question is like, where do you park? Mm -hmm. So I really think the skinny atlas thing, like with the big parking sign, the big P. Every, like you're right, everyone knows that big P is parking. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So I think if we had some of them, like over here at this, you know, as you're coming down 48, you know, like where you can park, what is it called, the square? Yeah. 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 Over by behind um, San Malone's out, out there. Yeah. Yeah. Or no, 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 over no. across. I, 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 I recognized that when I was doing this last week, our, our, our lots are not well marked. No. And that's no one's fault. I think that big P is we will. Big. Yeah, we'll, we'll get them more, and I like the comment about giving them a name, too. And the name allows us in uh, specific events to identify where you might direct. So for this event, we might say your best parking is the River Street parking lot, and people will know what that is because the big key underneath right. it says River Street parking you lot. You can put a QR code on there. Most smartphones can read a QR code, yep. take it right to the website yep. where your all your parking lots so We can do stuff like that. Uh, those are all good comments. I don't think people mind walking. I, I think it's just like they just don't know where it's 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 We just got to get them to some place. We just right. got to get them. Right. They're coming to the village. If we can get them in a lot, yeah. I think. We're good. We just yeah. got to get them to one of these spots that are open that people might not even realize are around. Well, like up here behind the liquor store, just past the, the light. I don't yeah, know. Is that the public one it's or not? not? It's no, not public. It's not. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, you see a lot, a of, lot people of people think ours is public. Right. Yeah. Right. 
You know, Steve, the cut through that we put in years ago between the village and my lot up there, we could block that off. I mean, I've, I've had it blocked off now for six months. I, I think it should be. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. I mean, we did it years ago because the yeah. police department wanted We've to clear access to the village. We've had about that. Yeah. And, you know, Dan, I, I think we, it makes a lot of sense because inevitably what was happening were people trying to avoid the traffic light. No kidding. Coming through your lot, little, your lot. <laughs> And, and to Steve's point about people driving too fast yeah. Um, yeah. through, through this lot, yeah, I think that, that, helps, that has helped reduce that. We've had plenty of close calls because that. the reason I blocked the, it off is that. Coming through the bank drive through the way our lot is now, it's difficult for them to go real fast. Yeah. And where before people would purposely try and zip around, and I'll still see somebody that doesn't realize it's closed off. Pull in, then I see the brake lights, and I'm like, oh, they were just trying to avoid the I light. Love it. I love so, it oh, I think it's hysterical. I now. get the wrath of them. And, and, and now they got to try and turn around, and there's no, no place to turn around. Yeah, it was affectionately named the Ballersville Bypass for you. Yeah. 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 I was thinking that our, our lot was called there, too, because it's a problem for us, too. Oh, sure. Because you've got yeah. the Kinney lot, our lot, and the other one, and they go through really fast. We have one speed bump, but it has to come up in the winter. We do the lot, we're going to do three, but again, it still has to come up in the winter. Right. Anything that can be done for that, because, you know, people don't notice. There's a little kid crossing the way, or an older person, and we've right. had near misses. Mm -hmm. Connected parking lots are actually, in, in Onondaga County, county planning pushes for connected parking lots for, for the reason that in many of our large plazas, travel distance is quite large and they don't want you having to yeah, come out yeah. of Coles, get on to 31 to drive up to the next. Mm. So interconnected parking lots work well. Intermunicipal interconnected parking lots are not as effective and they present that problem that you're talking about. People use them as, as, a, as a passageway as, a yeah. as opposed to just a way to get from one lot to the next or one place of business to the next. Generally within intermunicipal activity, the distance is not that great. If you you need to get from here to there, park and walk from here to there is uh, what we would prefer. So I, I think that it would be fine at this point because I think you picked up a couple parking spots. We picked up that. three. Yeah. And we and, feel that we have yeah. 70 cars there every day. So and right now, if the demand is that, you, that three more counts, I think it's better to have three more spots. You can pick up three on this side then, too? Two, you'll pick up. Two on the yeah, you side. might get two, but yeah. not three. But not in the winter because that's what it's snowed in. Right. Snow. Well, the, the snow actually we can put between where you guys plow and I do. There's enough space in between there for you to still get a couple of yeah. spots, I think, yeah. depending on the amount of snow. And we're going to re I'm going to look at it relay out of the parking Steve, lot. Steve, I've yep. got some green there that maybe turn in the park. Some green? Yeah. Like my dumpster's there right, right now. Right there, you could get one. Yeah. You think just one? Yeah. Yeah. That's not a lot. That was no, but for one, 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 yeah. For one of your tenants, it might be well, huge. If, if it's, yeah, my, my spot, then I'd be certainly be here. But you, that's where your dumpsters are now. Yeah. Well, you know, one spot is 10%. <laughs> we have 11 spots over here. Yeah. So, so in, in the case of this lot, one spot is a value. In, in some other lots, a space or two is not hurting us. To be honest, when I restrike River Street, I think we lost three spots. But I thought it was sufficient to, I thought it was, it made sense to strike it the way that we did, leaving the openings for people to walk through and stuff. But in the end, I lost a few spots. I don't think it's critical to us. It's, it's not a heavily stressed parking lot, particularly now that your business is a little different. Um, we certainly hope that it is in the future. Parking is not a bad problem to have. I mean, that means we have occupancy is up and activity within the village is good and it's been a long time since people have had that as a problem here so that's good i it certainly isn't something that i hope bottles us up we should be able to solve it and um i mean unless anyone else has anything i'm going to leave with the comments that i have here the notes that i've taken particularly signage giving awareness to where parking lots are we'll do that uh, we'll look at some very short term some 15 minute parking in isolated areas within the uh, uh, West Genesee Street, Oswego uh, Street corridor to see if there's some value there. Um, uh, we might remove some parking restrictions along Elizabeth Street. Uh, we might evaluate whether or not they should stay in or come down, but we'll take a look at that. Uh, I would like to strike Mercer Park parking lot because uh, while it doesn't provide parking for your everyday activities. It is good facility or a good activity or event parking 
And right now, if you go down there, you wouldn't know where to park because there's, there's no striping. So uh, we'll look at striping there. Um, Mercer Park, that's the one down by the river? Down it is, right down here right at the end of Charlotte Street. Yeah. Again, it's a long walk for going in and doing a transaction in a local business, but it's not a long walk if you're coming up and in, there's... Uh, uh, <coughs> The like like, the, like sure. the parade for yeah. the, the parade of lights. Right. Then that's that's not a far walk at all if you're coming for the parade of lights and you're going to be at the four corners, yeah. stand there for an hour and a half or two hours watching yeah, right. a hundred fire trucks roll by. <laughs> you know that's not a long walk because then you get done, you walk back down, you get in your car, <coughs> and you leave the village because that event brings several thousand people into the village for a, a very short period of time. Right. Everyone kind of shows up. They're here. The tree gets lit. The fireworks go off. Some people go to the library and other people get in their car and go home and some of it's weather dependent as to what it's doing out. Right. Um, so, but there's an event where people are all, always asking, where do we park? Because right. this lot is totally full. And then many other lots, the library yeah, cool. and the liquor store, right? Everywhere gets, gets full for that event. Even though it's not public parking, people just take the liberty and utilize it. Right. You said something, Steve, too, about striping, like a single street and stuff, because then that would add some space. space uh, it wouldn't, it wouldn't necessarily space. add space, but it would, it would, as it organizes the parking, it provides it that all of the spaces can be utilized. So when yeah. we have stress Vision. conditions, yeah. West Genesee Street, we had times when there was only, um, when there was few as six available parking spaces. But I'll bet you if the cars were parked it's better, better yeah. Uh, it would it might be eight or even ten. Yeah. So, so uh, I gotta look. I gotta talk to the state about that for their state roads. I don't think they'll have a problem with the striping. It. We need to find the funding. I, I did not anticipate this, so we're going to need to find a manner in which to do some of this work. But I'm but I'm certain we can do it. Um, because it, does anyone else have any issues? Any questions? Uh, and we'll try to address some overnight parking as well. I don't know the answer to that. I don't know if it's going to be an odd even type thing or if it's just going to be additional space. But we, we recognize that that's an issue for some of you that have tenants. Uh, and we'll, we'll see if we can solve that issue as well. I just have yes. a question. On, like we have signs that say, you know, library parking and, and threatens towing. Do we have to actually say on there where we would tow if we did? Well, yeah, because that's not, it's not the police that would do that towing. It's actually the library itself. Right. We would call time. somebody, right, but do yeah, we have actually say where we probably, would send them? You should probably talk to some legal counsel or yeah. somebody on that as to yeah. what yeah. you would <laughs> want that sign to say and then whether you want to actually <laughs> enforce that there. particular where you have to process. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Right, because you can't just call it then. And somebody calls up and says, my car's got stolen, and we say, no, it's probably told where to. We don't know who took it, you know. So you would want, if it was XYZ towing, you'd want to make sure that you had an arrangement with XYZ towing. Chances are slim to be honest. Well, most of you, your business people, but most of you don't have walk-in business, I will leave you with this note. The mayor has coined this a couple of years ago, and I strongly support it with the idea of activities and events. We have a lot of events here. People ask why we do. Sometimes it creates parking issues, but we really do it for the small business in the village. Our motto is, we'll bring them to the village, you get them into your door. And, you know, we, we bring, the, the concert events right now are drawing anywhere from 800 to 1,400 people. There's, there's 1,400 people in the village that would not be here on that Wednesday evening. It creates traffic, it creates parking problems, it creates all sorts of problems, but it also creates opportunity for small businesses. And our answer to why do you do this is we're hoping that it attracts people into your business. We're not doing it because we enjoy it. I mean, it's, we're not personally going and enjoying these concerts. We've heard from people that they want the concerts. So we are supporting the effort to have concerts because we've had people within the village say, we've got a facility there and we want to have concerts. But the true driver for having a paper mill island amphitheater and holding these events is to draw people in our, into our community so that they can then experience what's here and hopefully it will drive business. All we can do is get them to this location and we, we make it as big an effort as we can. It is your opportunity and therefore we think your responsibility to get them in your door. And, uh, and we just hope that people will. Um, and it, when we also hope that it's an effort that people appreciate and want because it, it is a concerted effort to hold the events that we do here. Um, uh, the two parades almost 
take care of themselves now. They, they've happened for so many years. Um, the Memorial Day Parade is is goes off without a hitch almost every year, right? I well, mean, and there's there's you know my lieutenant does a lot on the operational plan on the Memorial Day Parade, the turkey <coughs> trot, the uh, the Parade of Lights. Uh, those are you know, and you look start to look at the public safety issues associated with those. You'll now see at those events, Steve's guys in, in plow trucks, parked um, for our turkey trot. We've got them parked at, at, at particular locations, so we can't have a car smash into that parade or that that race route. Doesn't mean it can't. We're just trying to minimize it at the most likely locations. Same thing at our four corners at that parade of lights. Um, you look at those things. Same thing with the four corners with the Memorial Day parade. Uh, so the village is expending a great deal of resources, operational resources, to do our best to, to keep people safe during those events because we know the potential. We, we can't cover every um, circumstance, every potentiality, but we're just doing our best to minimize the most likely uh, uh, points of uh, weakness in, in the route to stabilize those and make those as secure as we can. And I think uh, to a few people that I spoke to before I had this meeting when I was setting this up, I thought that we might form some sort of a task group. I don't think that's necessary. And if anyone does, I'm certainly willing to do it. But at this point, I think the concentration needs to be on looking what we can do at this parking lot to create, provide some more public parking. And, uh, and I'll work on that. If anyone thinks that we need to get together and do some additional discussions regarding parking, I'm open to it, and I would certainly be glad to do it. So, um, but right now, while I had that initial thought, at this point, I don't think that's necessary. I just have one other little Sir? thing I just wanted to bring up, and Mayor Clark and I talked about it. Um, the Small Business Saturday hit on the same day as the parade lights this year, and they had the parking blocked off up Oswego Street all day long, like, which seems counterproductive to me. So I don't know if that's you, Steve, or who makes that call, but if there's some way we could you know, change that so maybe the parking is blocked off after three to block, do let's parking because it's not coincidental. The, the problem, and that, that's us, that's the police department, yeah. and that's a public safety <coughs> issue because we've tried to do that where, but the problem is people leave the car on the street. Right. Yeah. And now we've got people that are now trying to watch that parade getting outside that car and now into our room. And there's nothing that, that you can do like to just say after three o'clock, you know, the car needs to be moved or you're gonna you know, get slap them on the hand in some way so that that's. But then what do we do with those cars? You know, it, there's no oh. real, well, there's no real way of posting that per se up and down the street. We found the, the most effective means of doing that is to just block those those spots off from a real public safety point of view. We, we know it's not the most convenient thing. And, uh, and, and we discussed it. But from a public safety point, we just didn't see any other way around it because all it's gonna take is one or two cars in that road, and now we've got uh, that, that parade route has shrunk considerably on both sides for us, and now we've got a, a, a barricade that's not linear, and uh, and we're trying to keep people back. Right, I mean, I understand it's just so counterproductive to small business Saturday. You know, Would it be an option in a situation like that to have a trolley from a particular well, lot. That's what just I was kind of just thinking. Yeah. You know, some of them in the I'm trolley. Not, not, not unwilling to, 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 to think of alternatives. Right. I just want to make sure that by, you know, four o'clock. Right. There's there there can't be a car on that road. I mean, However, you can't we say accomplish after it. After four o'clock, clock your car will be towed. So just be prepared. Could we know, could we like declare it. small business Saturday? Day. Next week. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean. Well, but it's always the Saturday. Yeah, nationally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know, but, yeah. but yeah. could we just be different? I mean, say, we understand it nationally, yeah. but we, the only people who come into your candy shop are going to do that. But but to to do that, we would have to determine some, to get some surprise. signage oh. to, to really delineate that. Well. And, and again, that the car is going to be towed. That, that's going to require some. Oh, some logistical issues. And it wasn't uh, coincidental this year. Sure. It, it's always on that. The, the, the parade right, right. is always well, on that. Well, so Saturday. again, then that's why I'm so bringing it up. It now, if the chamber or another organization wanted to work on a trolley, we would greatly yeah. support that, the police department, I'm sure, and we would. And then you have to be willing to sit the other side. Yeah. yeah, I'm certainly willing to sit down and, and, and talk to the chamber or whomever. Um, to see what it is we can do, because yeah, I mean, you know our operational out. concerns, we have to have that open. Right. I certainly understand your concerns when we want to do our, our part to support small business. 
So there's probably a happy medium we can come up with. Right. Maybe we call it three o'clock to give us some time that if we gotta to tow some cars, right? Because it's gonna take us time but to get tow the trucks there. Get the, get the, get started we have people start lining up. We have people put chairs down at eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah. We literally had people put lawn chairs down at eight o'clock in the morning to come back at five o'clock that night for their seat. So I mean, therein lies our operational issues. So you understand our point of view. So we just gotta ensure that um, we can we can accomplish that whether that's through some barricading and some signage um, that we put up and, and, and are very clear that cars have to be off the street by three or they're going to get towed um, or, or however we're going to work that come up <coughs> it's also a, it's a stressful time for our resources because the turkey trot which is not our event but the village does an awful lot to support that happened what, two hey, days hey, earlier that's not yeah, now it's the saturday of the parade the parade is our event We've got a lot of activities there, so so we're stressed through that that period for resources as well, and um, just so you know, we basically nobody gets that weekend off, right? Yeah, that, that's a time period where we we use almost all of our resources at the police department. So you're talking a holiday yeah. weekend, yet our guys. Well, I was as an emergency room nurse for ten years, so I get that work in the holidays. So oh, yeah, yeah. So so our, our, our you know our, our folks they're, they're working this event, and we've got people. Because of the number of folks, we have to stage our folks, you know, uh, foot patrol and, and bike patrol if it's not too bad out um, at different points along that route just because of the number of people there. And, you know, the, the typical parade mentality, let's get out into the road because someone's going to throw candy or this or that. And it's almost better for us if there's snow banks so we can keep people <laughs> off, you know, stay on the other side of the bank. Um, but, uh, you know, that becomes an issue for us. But as long as we can. Yeah, as long as we can market and sign it properly, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna have a problem with doing yeah. it. But the problem we run into is all it takes is one one car on each side becomes a real issue for us now. Yeah, it really is. That's a big key, big parking key. Yeah. But you know, I certainly understand during the small business Saturday, people are gonna park and walk, and hopefully they're gonna visit some of the shops. If we can come come up with some solution, I'm, I'm more than willing to try and you know, find. Again, like yeah, like I guess it's like Joe's saying, you know, signs that say. You know, direct them to where they can park long term yeah. for that day. Yeah, yeah. and some of that waypointing will be, I think, helpful yeah. to us as well. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you for coming. My, my number is always available to people. Feel free to call if you have an issue on parking or anything else related to public works. Give us a call. Thanks for your comments, and uh, I will get started on some of this stuff. Be patient with me. Certainly, uh, some of this stuff won't happen until spring. But what we can do will be going on right away, and the priority will be to look at this parking lot to see if we can squeeze a few more spots out of this and maybe provide some more daytime uh, parking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.